like to call the November 28th meeting of the Mill Creek Township Board of Supervisors to order and we'll begin with the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time I'll call for public comment on agenda items other than those dealing with development or rezoning applications. It is. It is. My name is Sue Weber and I live at 5338 Norris Drive. As most people know, I was a township supervisor for Mill Creek for 12 years. Um, I. I looked at, I recently learned of the reorganization of the different departments that you are proposing to do. And I just had a couple questions and I wondered if I could ask them. Um, where did the idea come up with to reorganize the departments? Where did it come from? Right, where did it come from? What was the impetus for it? Uh, well, uh, you remember last year we created a public works director position um, that came out of, we had a series of retirements in, in the township building. We saw it was an opportunity to uh, combine several different public works operations under one department head. So that was the, the first step in that restructuring of departments was the creation of public works director. I like that idea. And I think the, that was a good, good move, personally. And so part of the restructuring right now is when we did that, we left out um, a handful of, of laboring departments that probably should have been put under Mr. Snyder, our public works director, including our traffic unit, our, um, our building facilities uh, department, uh, and also we'll be transferring our uh, parks maintenance crew underneath a public works umbrella. So that, that's part of that. Um, did, another, did, excuse me. Did you, did you say at one point this, this had to do with survey responses to embrace Mill Creek? I did. That, that's the next two um, thing I'll, I'll, I'll touch on is uh, we did have from our Embrace Mill Creek uh, comments, uh, folks are very concerned about code enforcement and wanted to enhance code enforcement. And from our own, ana our own analysis, of Mr. Groh and I have both had experience in zoning and code enforcement issues. We identified that our current emergency management coordinator, Mr. Matt Exley, uh, and his assistant have done an excellent job actually doing property maintenance uh, enforcement. Uh, the Granada issue, for example, was largely driven by our fire code inspector, Mr. Exley. Um, I, so excuse me, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little under the weather. I oh, apologize. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, our, our fire code inspector, emergency management coordinator, Mr. Exley, had been doing a, a uh, taking on, a, a, let's say, a, a more significant role in code enforcement. So part of this restructuring as well is to actually create a code, a code enforcement department under Mr. Exley in addition to his emergency management duties. So we'll be shifting uh, two staffers from our zoning office into solely a property maintenance inspection role under Mr. Exley as a director of emergency management and code enforcement. So that, that's one of the issues that, at least in, from my consideration, is tied directly to public input from Embrace Mill Creek. Uh, the well, other I will say restructuring. This, excuse me. When I was here, we had regular code enforcement. People could call in a complaint. They didn't need to fill out a form. We had code enforcement. People go out in the field, and things got done. And it's just such a mess now. So I hope this solves it. It's just too complicated, you know, for people just need to be able to call, get things done, if there's high grass next to them, if there's junk vehicles, and it, it has become very cumbersome, so I guess I understand that. Well, so let me go. I, I think since Granada has been crumbling for the past 20 years, I don't think it was working before, and Mr. Exley's fixed it. He's got a plan in place to be more proactive in enforcement, and so part of this is uh, you, reassigning existing staff to help beef up his department to make that operation we feel a little more proactive uh, in response to public support that we I receive. hope so because it is it is totally different than when I was here now and, that, and it's not and it's not working the other question that I had was um, and I need to explain this 
Parks and Rec, I understand it very well because I was liaison to it for very many years. And Jim Sperry, our old Parks and Rec director, um, came here out of college and he built this department into what it was and it's one of the finest Parks and Rec departments municipally in the state. And I know from working with Jim and from being very involved on the board of MYAA for many years that, that Jim in the summer would spend 70% of his time at ball fields, at facilities, dealing with coaches, dealing with people. And I think it would be a huge mistake to take the maintenance portion of that out from under the parks and rec director. And I'll tell you another reason why. Jim would always go to school about playground safety. And so would some of the guys. And he would be able to spot when things were wrong at the playgrounds as well as on the fields. I mean, again, literally, he would jump and run all summer long. I can't see the head of the building maintenance being, giving, be, being given all that responsibility that the parks and rec director should have because it's their department, it's their ball diamond clay, it's the, it's the coaches calling them. I mean, I think that would be just to take that out from under the direct responsibility of the parks director, it, it just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Does it to you? Yes. Uh, Why? If, if I could address that, Sue, since that's been my department for a number of years. Um, we're, we are working with the strengths, we believe, of the personnel that we have. And we feel that our current parks and rec director, who would, will, will be our recreation director, programming director, or actually a manager, um, um, Ashley's strengths are in programming. And um, we'd like to... Um, pursue that. We'd like to um, see her take that to the next level, our programs to the next level. Um, I think that with the cooperation of our current um, facilities manager, uh, our bureau chief, Jerry Berger, who you know very well, um, he, uh, he is very good at what he does and I think that with his uh, expertise and with that of Gary Snyder, our, our uh, Director of Public Works, I think that they'll make a good team to uh, uh, make sure that those facilities continue to be in, in top condition. Uh, that's Jerry's strength. Ashley's strength is in programming, and that's where we're going to uh, let her concentrate. When you sat down with Jerry Berger to tell him about this, did he tell you that he feels that he's up to this job or that it's good to add all these responsibilities to his job position? Did you talk to him about this? No, this was a big surprise tonight, Sue. No. Of course we talked to him. When yes, you t when I, I you talked talk to him at length. Right, and, and so he thinks this is a good idea. Absolutely. Uh, well, we have our uh, public works director in the audience, if you'd like to ask, Mr. Snyder himself. Uh, he, but, uh, he's uh, up to the challenge, and, and uh, um, he understands that it's going to be more work, but uh, um, he's very good at what he does, and, and uh, I think he'll... he'll a bang up job on, on uh, the facility, the park facilities also. Well, I do think that Ashley does a very good job and she does a very good job of programming. But are you saying that the current setup now, the current maintenance now is failing because she's not addressing it? Is that what we're saying? Um, I don't want to get into personnel issues tonight. Um, this is not the, the place for that. But we think that, uh, as I said, we are making uh, best use of the personnel that we have. I just and, 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 oh. and I'd add that um, I just want to echo Mr. McGrath's um, comments about uh, Ms. Marsteller. Um, this is not we don't. This is not a uh, demotion. We're not. No one is being demoted as part of this restructuring. No one's getting a salary no. reduction. Um, this is all realigning township resources to what we feel is a much more effective and, and efficient organization um, in terms of parks and you know, our parks maintenance versus our facilities and grounds maintenance um, in the last just the two years I've been here when it comes to budget requests we've seen kind of duplicative equipment being requested in both departments who do very similar work um, even the work being done in our parks are being done largely uh, with the assistance of our facilities crew so we really do see this uh, as an efficiency and it's not <laughs> It's actually quite common to have your parks maintenance in a public works function. The city of Erie does that right now. Um, and we feel like uh, this new realignment when it comes to 
uh, Ms. Marsteller and, and, and Ms. Cirillo is actually putting really more uh, creative individuals in our building together as a team uh, underneath um, Judy Zaline, our public services director, to actually put our programming for both recreation, senior service programming, recycling programming, all into one department on the first floor, which we feel is much more convenient for our- And they do a lot of things together now. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of synergy with putting uh, those individuals in the same department. And I just have one more question. Mr. Groh, are you in favor of this realignment? No, I'm not. Well, then my question would be, you've only got another month or so till Mr. Bach takes office. If this is really a great idea, it will be a great idea three months from now when he's had time to get acquainted with the township. Mm -hmm. So since he's the one who's gonna have to live with this, and John Grow and Mr. Morgan, don't you think it's more fair and diplomatic to wait until he gets into office and let him be part of this decision? Uh, we had a meeting with the department heads, um, former department heads, now managers and uh, well, directors, bureau chiefs and directors, and we invited Mr. Bach and he was at the meeting. But what's the hurry to do this right now? Why not wait until he comes well, in? Well, this is a budget item. It, it, had, it plays into the budget and um, we need to have a budget for the end of the year. Chairman, it's been about 10 well, minutes Well, I'll, I'll just you leave you with one parting remark. The only reason that township supervisors get elected and reelected to office is because these employees make you look good. Absolutely. We've always had a tremendous amount of good employees at Mill Creek Township. Yes. And I have heard over and over again um, about how the employees are being treated. And I'll address that to you directly, Mr. Morgan, in public, because it's not Mr. McGrath and it's not Mr. Grow. And in the new year when Mr. Bach comes into office, if the employees continue to be treated the way they're being treated, I predict a lot of problems with the township here. Just take that under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Anyone else? Brian, there's a lady out there that wants, she had raised her hand. Oh no, it's a gentleman too, I'm sorry, okay. I didn't see him. This is on an agenda item? No, I didn't, this is my first time. Okay, right. that'll if, be at the end then. That'll be at the end. We'll have citizens to be heard at the end. This is public comment on agenda items right oh, now. Okay. Where were we? Okay, next we have uh, minutes from November the 14th. If there are no additions or corrections to those minutes, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes from November 14th. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. We have the bills for the past two weeks. If there are no additions or corrections to those, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move that we pay the bills for these last two weeks. I'll First, second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next we have under bids and quotations, this is for the Amherst Road Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation uh, Project. Uh, this is a lining of the sanitary sewer. Uh, this is, uh, we received a memo from John Blose, uh, received a quote through uh, COSTARS program number 016. And the, let's see if we have a total there. Total of uh, $11,080. And um, it is Mr. Blose's recommendation that the contract be awarded to Insight Pipe Contracting um, under the COSTARS program. And I will move approval of that. And I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next we have uh, resolution 2017 R47. This is a resolution to approve the independent auditor's report of the Erie Area Council of Governments for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2016. Um, the audit report was passed around to the, uh, to the board <clears throat> we have the uh, auditor's letter. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the auditor noted no, transa tra no transactions entered into by the organization during the year for which there was a lack of authoritative guidance or consensus. All significant transactions have been recognized 
in the financial statements and in, in the proper period. Um, the resolution uh, states that the auditor's report finds the audit to be in good order. And I would move approval of uh, resolution 2017-R47. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that one. Mr. Groh? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next, we have resolution 2017-R48. This is a resolution to approve the annual budget for the Erie Area Council of Governments for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2018. Um, again, this was passed around to the board. Um, in summary, the budget is, the proposed budget is nearly equal to the 2017 approved budget, a uh, difference of $97. And the budget reflects a 3% salary increase for the COG administrator, a 3% increase in member dues except for the county. The county's dues would remain the same. Um, and that is primarily due to the fact that the county now provides the office space for, uh, for the COG. So I would move approval of the uh, proposed budget for the COG, uh, resolution 2017-R48. I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Groh? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next we have resolution 2017-R49. This is a resolution pursuant to resolution 2015-R20 and the municipal records manual to approve proposed uh, disposition of certain township records. And Mark Zuchewski, I'll refer to you on that. This is the uh, ongoing uh, disposal of uh, non-evidentiary um, dash cam videos. Uh, they take up quite a bit of space on, on the servers and uh, we're somewhat short-handed. Uh, there, there are some proposals for uh, increasing server size for next year. Maybe it'll be uh, a little less frequent, but uh, for now, they need to make space on a continuous basis. Okay. This yeah. is just for about a two-week period? Okay. About, no matter what, a four-week period. It's four week? Yeah. Four okay. Weeks. If I might add, no matter what, it seems like we're running out of space for storing records, whether they're paper, film, or uh, digital. Uh, it's still, we run out of space real quick. So. Okay. All right, is there a motion regarding uh, Resolution 2017-R49? Yeah, I'll move to approve res Resolution 2017-R49, the disposal of those records. Is there a second? As indicated. I'll second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Next, we have the appointment of uh, CPA auditors for 2017. This is tabled from our November 14th meeting. Mark, I'll refer back to you on that. Okay, this is... Uh, we're I'm, I'm recommending that uh, we can, uh, maintain our uh, current audit firm of Felix and Gleckler for one more year at least. Uh, we should probably go through a formal RFP process next year uh, just to keep everything you know, above board. But uh, they do a, a fine job and uh, we need to do this uh, also so uh, there's supposed to be a 30-day notice to the for the appointment of the auditor. So okay. we're getting up to that time limit. And you said it's at the same price? Uh, yes. Okay, and how many years has uh, Felix and Gleckler been performing the audit for? This, it's, uh, this is the third year, third. I believe. Okay. All right. Third or fourth, third for sure. Is there a motion regarding uh, the resolution regarding the uh, or not a resolution, but the appointment of the auditors. Mr. Chairman, if I may, at the, at the prior meeting, there was a question raised by oh, yes, uh, Supervisor right. Groh regarding whether uh, he would be able to vote on this uh, because uh, I think some member of the firm uh, had made a, a campaign contribution uh, to his campaign a couple of years ago. Uh, I did take a look at that, and under the uh, Pennsylvania Public Official and Employee Ethics Act, uh, the mere fact that someone has made a political contribution does not per se create a conflict. Uh, there, near, there needs to be more than, than just mere speculation to, to uh, make that type of assertion or conclude that there is a conflict. Uh, in a set, essentially, the public official's action you know, has to be accompanied by an awareness that you know, the money was given you know, pretty much in exchange for a vote on something. And, and clearly, you know, a campaign donation given a couple of years ago 
uh, is not given in, in, uh, in exchange for you know, this type of vote here two years later. So I think that uh, based on, on my reading of the various uh, uh, advisory opinions and decisions under the Act, uh, and the facts that I'm aware of, it, it does not appear that uh, there, it would be a conflict of interest just for so, Mr. Groh to vote on this. Okay, and just so no one gets the wrong impression here, no one did make that implication Correct. or assertion. Yeah. This was Mr. Groh raising the... I had made the inquiry about right. that. I want to make sure he's staying above board on this. Right. Thank you for checking into that, Mark. Sure. Brian. Okay. Um, all right, then I will make the motion to appoint Felix and Gleckler as the auditor's for 2017. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Mr. Grove? I'll vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Thank you. Next we have uh, intergovernmental agreements regarding the use of sewer department equipment and employees. The first was from Harbor Creek Township Sewer Authority. This is something that uh, we have been uh, performing for Harbor Creek Sewer Authority for several years now. Um, they have an INI program, inflow and infiltration program, very similar to ours in the township, and uh, it's been very successful. Uh, we allow the uh, township crew and equipment to, uh, to do work in Harbor Creek Township. Harbor Creek Sewer Authority then reimburses the township for the use of the equipment and the labor costs that, uh, that are incurred. Um, so I would move that uh, we permit that agreement again with the Harbor Creek Sewer Authority. Yes, and I'll second that. Mr. Grow? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. And the second one is uh, for a similar request from Girard Township, not for an I, &I program, but they have a, uh, a storm sewer that they would like to have inspected and uh, they would like the use of our, uh, again, camera uh, crew and equipment to do that inspection. <clears throat> and uh, Girard Township, excuse me, <clears throat> Gerard Township uh, recently permitted the use of uh, two of their trucks and uh, drivers for a uh, ditch cleaning project that we had on 23rd Street. So we're very, uh, very much grateful to them for that. And uh, I would uh, move that the uh, crew again be permitted to um, uh, go into Gerard to perform uh, the inspection of the storm sewer pipe. That's a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll second that motion. Uh, Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next, we have a consent decree with the Voices for Independence, and I'll refer to our solicitor on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. D, uh, this relates to uh, the lawsuit that was filed by Voices for Independence uh, against the Township and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania uh, relating to uh, compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, this would be the fifth consent decree and partial settlement uh, among the township and the plaintiffs. Uh, this consent decree addresses the uh, facility, ADA facility upgrades that were recently uh, adopted by the township uh, as part of their transition plan. Um, this would incorporate that into the consent decree uh, and um, uh, as part of the transition plan there are a variety of facilities that are going to be uh, upgraded over time. The township has in fact already started that process. Uh, one example would be uh, Asbury Park. A number of sidewalks were installed uh, this past summer to bring uh, that park into ADA compliance in terms of accessibility. So those types of things are the types of improvements that folks will be seeing over the next couple of years at the at various parks and facilities uh, of the township. Uh, in addition, it provides for uh, the payment of the attorney's fees for voices uh, in a total amount of $18,058.01, uh, and uh, I would recommend approval of this uh, fifth consent decree. Uh, if the supervisors approve, uh, this would then get submitted to the court for the court's approval, uh, and ultimately, the, assuming the court's approval, it would be entered uh, and then become an effective uh, consent decree and settlement that uh, the township would need to abide by. And you've reviewed the uh, uh, council's billing? Yes, and they all they, they were, appeared to be reasonable. There are a couple things we found we raised to the, with them. They uh, removed them. So, okay. All right. Is there a motion regarding the consent decree? We yeah, all move to approve the consent decree as presented today, the fifth consent decree. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grout. I vote yes. Mr. Morgan. I vote yes. I vote yes. Next on the agenda is the 
uh, new lease for the district justice office. And Mark, I think that you helped draft that, is that correct? Sure, it's a, a lease agreement that uh, we had uh, uh, revised based upon the, the format uh, that the township had been using. Uh, previously, we added some additional things to them, presented to the county, and, and after a period of delay, the county uh, finally uh, approved and ex uh, or, the, or the county solicitor agreed to these. I think the county still needs to vote on this, but um, this is the format that's been acceptable and is being recommended uh, both to the supervisors here as well as to the county uh, uh, county officials. So we'll approve it first, and then it'll go to the county. I think that's how the timing's working out. Okay. Oh, well, depends upon their meetings. Yeah, I don't. I okay. Don't know. Okay. I haven't heard anything. Okay. I, do, I do have a question in regards to the other tenants that are in the building. Uh, Berkheimer's, uh, of course, the sewer authority, we just approved a new lease agreement for the sewer authority. Uh, for the tax collector, have we, I know that there's something of, as far as the compensation. Have we ever come up with an official document for that yet? I'm not aware that, that that was ever finalized. I know at okay. some point. Because I thought uh, there had to be something to, to show that there was a, some sort of lease agreement. For, for Berkheimer? No, no for, for the tax collector. For Ms. Craker, for real estate tax. Yeah, there are a number of okay. leases that that I think yeah. for a variety of the tenants that I have, think it's part of the that have expired over time right? and they need yeah. to be renewed and okay. well, and re reworked. I'd like to make a note there, a mental note that we need to get something going on. That get some documentation. Well, we've got two down. Then we've got two more to go. Okay. Well, let's, okay. we can move on them. Yep. All right. So, is there a motion in regard to the uh, district justice lease? Yeah, I'll move to approve the lease uh, between the county and Mill Creek Township in regard to the District Justice Office. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next we have the 2017 management salary approvals. Um, it's a long list. It will be available to those who would like to inspect it, but uh, um, Mark, maybe you could give me a, a what's the range? From the the range of the increases are from 2.25% to 2.95% uh, on sort of a, um, a bell curve kind of uh, distribution. Uh, these, they were rated based or assigned a value based on uh, their score in a recent management review that was performed, uh, a performance review, and uh, it would the logic was to try to get uh, uh, some sort of logical scheme, not just to give everybody the same increase. So uh, those in the middle got the average increase. And Which would be right around two and a half, roughly? 2.6. .6. But the average, the overall average is, it ended up being rated right uh, just slightly over 2.5%. Okay. It was like $300 over. You and that was what was budgeted, was 2.5%. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? Just for clarification, this has nothing to do with the reorganizational chart? These are just These are raises are that would have been occurring this year? Correct. Right? I just want to make yes. sure yes. What, These, I, what these I know I'm voting on. Right. This, this is only the performance-based salary increases back to January 1 of this year. Okay, and we're 2017. Yes. Okay. Okay, and we're also in the midst of negotiations with the union too. Correct. Yes. It's been going on for a year now. That's correct. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Um, is there a motion in regard to the management? Um, and this is for two, four, six. Twenty-one management employees. Is that right, Mark? Yes. Okay. Um, is there a motion in regard to those uh, salary increases? I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Um, Mr. Morgan. I vote yes. Mr. Grove. I will vote yes on this. And I'll vote yes. And next we have what Mrs. Weber referred to earlier as the Mill Creek Township Departmental Restructuring. And although, John, you did give a 
summary, I'll refer back to you since you were most uh, closely involved in this. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, as I mentioned before in a previous discussion, uh, we are restructuring, uh, reporting, the reporting structure of the township. Uh, when just as early as two years ago, there were about 15 different what we call department heads in the building. Uh, as part of a review of operations and from recommendations from our comprehensive plan and our consulting uh, uh, consultants we've had in the building, uh, working with the public through our public input initiative called Embrace Mill Creek, uh, we have identified some ways to streamline our operation, and which is what this restructuring is. Uh, essentially, we will be combining our zoning and engineering office into a planning and development department. Uh, with an internal promotion of Mr. Matt Waldinger to be our Director of Planning and Development. Uh, we are also shifting our code enforcement responsibilities out of zoning and placing them with our fire inspectors, uh, promoting Mr. Matt Exley to be the Director of Emergency Management and Code Enforcement. Uh, we will also be uh, shifting the rest of our laboring maintenance functions under our public, public works director, Mr. Gary Snyder, and also shifting our, the recreation element of our parks department uh, to be a part of our public services department under Judy Zelina. Uh, those are the major restructurings we're, we're looking at. Uh, what we'll be voting on today. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Morgan and also our um, human resource director, uh, human resource manager. Got to make sure we have the titles correct now. Uh, Diane Lyons for their, for their work on this. I know that this has been going on for about a year. Um, We've had conversations with the various bureau chiefs, managers, directors in regard to this uh, shifting of responsibilities in some cases, uh, additional responsibilities in a few. And um, I think this is going to make for a um, smooth transition. A, a, I think the communications will be much improved when we would have, though infrequent, um, meetings with the various department heads, uh, we needed a big room. There'd be uh, probably 20 people in the room um, going around the table talking about what was going on in each department. Although it was beneficial, it was cum uh, cumbersome with the, uh, the number of people that were involved. I think now we'll be able to have a meeting like that with a, a smaller group, uh, get much more accomplished, and have uh, uh, much better communications uh, interdepartmentally. So I think that this is a, a good move, um, one that's probably um, overdue, and uh, I think that it's going to be beneficial to the, to the residents and also those doing the, uh, uh, the work for the township. Well, and, and I'll add, when we look at uh, really the six individuals that are going to make up this executive team of, of directors. They, they really are uh, the cream of the crop in the building. They're all internal promotions. Uh, we, we don't, we're not looking to add bureaucracy. We're not looking to bring in uh, new hired guns to write something that's wrong. What we've done is identified really some exceptional leaders in the building. Uh, we want to recognize them, utilize their expertise to form what really is the kind of the executive committee to advise this board uh, so that the professionals in the building uh, have a little more have a little more influence, a little more direct line of communication with the policymakers to improve operations. Uh, it's I mean, I, actually I, I, I look <coughs> at some of the movements we're, we're seeing from the incoming mayor's administration, uh, the Erie Comprehensive Plan with their uh, their action team they've created down there, which is really what this is going to be. It's going to be the six kind of executive level positions in the building that are going to be able to take the directives and policies established by this board and be held accountable for implementing them. So I think it's really going to improve our operations and put some more accountability in the building. John? I guess it's mine now? Yep. OK. Um, as you probably heard prior, a few minutes ago, I'm not in favor of this. Uh, I'm going to ask a question here. And I think Mrs. Weber asked it. She stole my thunder on this one. Uh, why is the proposed change needed? I think you've given some some reasons there, but I'm not too sure about if I really go along with it. Here's what's going on, folks. So the truth is I asked that very same question back in October. Didn't get an answer why we needed to have this change. I got looks like, why are you asking that question? John, let me interrupt. 
you did ask that question, and I think it was answered, and I think it was answered quite succinctly at that time. No. You asked, why are we doing this? And we said, I said, I don't think that this is, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I think this is, how can we improve it? And I think this is an improvement. This is a way to make things better. You it, don't, because things are going okay, you don't leave them alone. If you see a way to make things better, you do that. And in addition, Mr. Groh, at that meeting, every member of the executive staff systematically explained the improvements to their operations because of this change. Right. And yes. even though you choose to ignore those recommendations, it's even though you choose to ignore them. what yeah. the professional staff have to say and would rather make a scene here publicly, yeah. you're not okay. accurate in saying yeah. you never got an answer. Okay. Well, You've been part of the discussions for a year. You you're, choose okay. not to agree with them. And, you've, and you have no problem mm -hmm. with most of it. There's only one particular change you disagree with that Ms. Weber brought up earlier. I, and I think that's the sticking point. Actually, um, the first time I asked that question in October, did not receive an answer. The second time it was brought up was in a meeting on November the 8th. And at that time, the answer was brought up was a lack of communication among the supervisors something for it to get difficult to get all of us together at the same time. Uh, to that I reply, uh, I have got uh, a cell phone, I've got email, I've got uh, text messaging, and of course you can always come and visit my office. Um, then I saw in the news last week, according to the Erie News Now, on November the 20th, this is to streamline in response to public input regarding the comp plan. Well, I reviewed all of the information from the neighborhood uh, comments. There is a document that summarizes everything, and nowhere on there is a restructural reorganization of the township government mentioned. To back that up even further, yesterday I got a hold of Peter Lombardi, who is the consultant with CZB who was doing the, planning con uh, the comprehensive plan for us, and he said there was none regarding that. He said, we don't even have a draft of the comp plan, which I kind of figured anyway. I do know a little bit about these things. Uh, I don't buy the reason that it was in the comp plan. I don't buy it for a second. I don't buy it. it has anything to do with the public input. The fact is that we are the supervisors here in the township, and we oversee our departments. So with the vague uh, and initial responses and lack of supporting evidence, I can only believe there is a different motive for this right here. Uh, the lack of solid evidence and reasoning makes me believe something else is going on, and that doesn't smell right. Uh, I support change. Yes, I do. And I know that there's going to be some out here that are saying, oh, he's against change. No, I am in favor of change. If you guys recall, I was on the bus twice when it comes to changing the form of government here in Mill Creek. For those who don't remember that, there, there was a study done in 2012. At that time, I was also pushing that we do a study to see if we could change the form of government here. At that very same time, uh, it was approved by the voters. I was also actually a candidate to serve on that study commission. Did not make it on the commission there, but that's okay. Um, that was, question was approved. That commission did a study. They determined that everything is working fine the way it is. Okay, well, since I couldn't take no for an answer when I was a supervisor, 2015, I brought up the same question again, and the question was put on the ballot. Do we want to look into home rule government? That question failed. Okay, so I don't need to be told a third time that things are working okay here the way they are. And I know that some people may take exception to that right there, but I look at it this way. Until the residents here really want the change that maybe I think is needed, when they all come out with loud voices, with petitions that will allow it to be signed in the building here too, that we can do something if they want it done. But right now, all I see this is, is something that it just smells and it really reeks of politics. Can you be more specific? Brian, I, I just have a problem. You're 30 days out from leaving office and all of a sudden we have to ram this thing through here. If it is that good of a change, why can't it be wait, wait until next year, till January? I know it's a budgetary thing. That was kind of slid in there too, to be the reasoning why. I disagree with that. I, I'm not buying any of this. It just seems rather odd, especially, now John is right, one of the things 
has to do with the Parks Department. Why are we blowing up the parks? Brian, you've made that Parks Department. I'm not trying to blow smoke, you know where. I'm telling you the truth. You have helped make that Parks Department what it is. Mrs. Weber had control over it before. Other supervisors have. Since you've taken over on that there, we have two golf courses, right? We also have two more parks. So we have an ever-expanding department, and yet we want to dismantle it. We want to split it up. I don't know if many people know this, but the Parks Department has the most employees on a seasonal basis. They have about 90 employees. Now granted, they are part-time people, they're seasonal, but they are employees nonetheless. They need to be supervised. I think Ms. Marsteller had done a great job of doing that there. To do anything else, I think is merely insulting, not to her, but to our residents here in the township. They have come and to know and love and respect our parks department, the services it provides. And to do anything else, to somehow blend it into something else there, I, I don't think it's right. Now this is, it just, it just kind of, the timing on it, the, it's just beyond belief right here. It just smells of something else going on. That is my reasoning for it. But, I also, wait, no, wait, wait, I'm not done. I also look at these flow charts. I look at the, the titles and the terms, you know. I'm not one that gets off on titles. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm a supervisor. You can call me a roadmaster. You can call me a director of this, a director of that. It doesn't matter. Administrator of this, administrator of that. All I know is I have a job to do here. People elected me to do a job. The job description that they gave me, which is unwritten, is the one that I know the best. I don't need a document or a title to tell me what I'm doing here. I know what I'm doing here, and I know how to serve the public. I do it by getting out there, answering phone calls, answering emails, visiting the departments, visiting the residents, seeing what their concerns are, trying to help them out when it is something that we are supposed to do. I don't see any of the, this right here. We have always had hands-on approach to the departments. Now we're going to have another layer, and I mean another layer of government, although you guys might say it's not. You know, I see another office being created, another position, director of administration. You know who else has a director of administration? County government. Nothing against that man because he does a great job, Gary Lee. But they have 500 employees down at the county. We have 175 total, 63 are police officers. Can I, can I just clarify on that point? We're not, we're not creating a, a, a new title. Mark Krzyzewski, our current treasurer, um, currently operates our administrative offices. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, our HR, our finance, our payroll, our purchasing all, all fall under Mark. And so just to be consistent with the new arrangement, because he actually does run the literal administrative offices of the township, um, we're giving him the, the title of Director of Administration to be consistent with the other director titles. So I, I just want to cl clarify that. that no See, the, the, the county we're director... We're not hiring anybody. We're not changing anybody's job. We're just referring to Mark now instead of referring to him as the treasurer. He's the director okay. of administration. And he'll still be appointed. In the second class township code, you have to appoint someone to be your treasurer. That's correct. So yes. he'll be the appointed treasurer, but his job title will be Director of Administration. Just like we have, we appoint an engineer every year, too, and a solicitor. Yes, we do. I just want to clarify the, that point, though. Thanks. I guess I, rather than belabor this whole thing, we have a lot of people out in the audience here, and you know, here we are at quarter to eight. Uh, I'll just close it up with uh, two comments here. And for the public, I want you to know this is not going to do anything to fix the problems of the roads, the flooding, the fire department concerns that we have, the police department concerns that we have as far as staffing. These are not going to be solved with this right here. It's smoke and mirrors, folks. And like I said, like the question I asked, why couldn't this be waited until January? Also want to remind people, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Shaw, the budget can be reopened in January, up until the end of, the, uh, end of January, when there's a new uh, supervisor taking office, and I'm not going to put him on the spot, nor will I dare do that, but one never knows if this whole thing could change in January. That's all I'm going to say. If you want to call the question, go ahead. Oh, no, I, want, I have a few comments. Um, nobody's changing any form of government. Um, Martin or John has brought that up multiple times, and each time I've addressed it, 
Uh, we're not changing a form of government. The government, we're still going to be three supervisors, yep. still making the decisions. All this does, as I said before, is improve communications. No, it's not going to fix the roads, although it might certainly help because now well, I, we'll I have actually a I, I have an issue with, with that comment because I think we are doing better fixing the roads uh, last year the first step of this was creating public works director mr. Snyder implemented a new a new program a systematic program for reviewing the roads and programming roadways so this year and I, I the public's not going like to hear this but I think for the first time in, in a long time the entire roadway program was completed and under budget uh, this past summer so those kind of improvements are being made, and it's being made because it's no longer supervisors picking and choosing what roads get paved mm -hmm. like we used to, because we, with the hands-on supervisors picking and choosing, it's because we let professionals in the building be professionals in the building. So, and Mr. Snyder's here, and I, I commend him for the work he's doing. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, and uh, I'll address one more comment, John. Uh, as far as the, uh, the uh, public meetings, the four public meetings that we held, um, I attended two of them. I think that Mr. Morgan attended all four. Um, they, uh, the input that we received was, was um, critical, I believe, towards the um, structuring, the compilation of the, of the uh, new comprehensive plan of Brace Milkery. Um, no, they didn't come out and say, you need to restructure um, your directors at the township because nobody thought of doing things like that. They just um, mentioned what they liked about the township and what they thought needed to be improved. What, what we're trying to do here is find an avenue for making those improvements. No, it's not in the comprehensive plan because the comprehensive plan hasn't been done yet. That's right. They're working on it. That's correct. But as part of that, as part of incorporating the changes that the that the residents stated that they wanted, I think that this is a, a critical part of that. This is, this is something that's going to help uh, reach that end, which was improving roads and police protection and zoning. Um, that's all things that uh, we can address with these changes that, uh, that are being proposed. So according to the neighborhood meeting summary, which it is a document that's available, uh, the overall view of Mill Creek's most pressing need <coughs> at 16%, there's two of them tied at 16%, and they're the most, uh, the ones that have the most pressing need. Stormwater management. Next one is road conditions and uh, they need maintained. Absolutely. Uh, and part the of the restructuring is we're actually uh, promoting Mr. Matt Waldinger to be a planning and development director to better coordinate the efforts of our engineering and zoning and development uh, okay. operations. And we're also uh, expanding our engineering department. Okay. So well, those, that so will be addressed. And again, the roadway conditions we have yeah. addressed with this new public works, visit, public works department we've Well, uh, since, since we're all adults here and we understand that there's a thing called money, money is what's going to fix these two problems here. It's not going to be reorganizi reorganizing departments and all this other stuff. Absolutely, and I agree with you. And on, on that, that note, that is where the issue is going Mr. to be. Mr. Waldinger and Mr. Snyder have been taking the lead in actually appropriating federal funds for next year to pave roadways, because now we've got two leaders who are coordinating efforts. They're identifying resources, and we are hoping to secure about four hundred thousand dollars of federal aid uh, for Cher for Cherry Street and other federal aid uh, roads in Mill Creek Township going to take more money than that well it's a start oh absolutely start. Oh, in, in, in addition it's, to our liquid true. fuels money you're absolutely right right want to make it clear that i have nothing against the people that are put in these positions here i think and i do agree and i did say that that we have good people in charge of these departments but what we've got is a change of titles and justifying pay increases for them because of the change of titles um, that is troubling to me uh, what's going on here? The Parks Department. I'll go back to that. I mean, it seems like we're disassembling. And I, and I, as I said that, Brian, it, it's, it's sad that, you know, you're on your way out, and here we are a month away, and the Parks Department's being blown up. I, and I, I, I'm going to say this, and it may come across sarcastic, and it's not meant to be. Are we going to get rid of the golf courses, too? I mean, because this is something that is part of it. This is something that you have been very violent. And like I said, I'm not trying to blow smoke. I'm telling you the fact. 
you have been driving the bus on this. And it's something that you're very proud of here at the township. The township residents that play golf there and other residents, you know, we've got the learning center, we're getting that thing reopened again here, hopefully. What are we doing when we're disassembling that? And what are we doing to Jerry Berger, who is our building maintenance guy, who is going to be overseeing the maintenance of these parks? Well, Jerry Berger has been my go-to guy for a number of years when I need something relative to whether it's the golf courses or Veterans Park or one, one of the other facilities. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that I go to. He's very familiar with those facilities. Mm -hmm. he, he and his crews work on those facilities. He is yes. going to be assuming additional employees. Mm -hmm. What is it? Three, I believe we three, have them. Yes. three yeah. additional okay. employees, three full-time employees from the Parks Department to assist in that. One foreman who has been here for ever, mm -hmm. um, who is very familiar with with uh, um, how the the uh, ball fields are maintained, and will continue to do so. We're not blowing anything up. I think that this is a good way to expand the services, expand the programming. Uh, as I stated earlier, Ashley's strength is in programming and she will be able to, I'll say, spread her wings and go even further and, and make um, additional improvements to the programs yep. being offered by the township. Jerry Berger's strength is in facilities, the management of them and the maintenance of them. And I think that with that existing parks crew along with his crew and his expertise, I think that that is going to be even better than it is now. Okay, I'll just ask one more time, then I'm done. Would you guys be willing to table this until January? No. Let's call the question on the vote then. Right. Um, is there a motion in regard to the, and how did we refer to this? The Mill, Mill Creek Township Departmental Restructuring. I will uh, move to approve restructuring. I will second that. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. Mr. Grow? I vote no. And I'll vote yes. Next we have PennDOT Sidewalk Reimbursement and Maintenance Agreement. Uh, this is for West 12th Street and West 26th Street. And Mr. Shaw, I'll refer to you. Mr. Shaw, just to clarify, th this is not the overarching agreement that PennDOT is trying to, is uh, provide, is putting forward for the Interchange Road and Peachtree Project. These are very specific to these two projects. Correct. This yeah. is a, an agreement that was worked out uh, as part of um, one of the prior Voices settlements. Uh, if you recall, Voices had raised questions about um, or had raised issues with respect to shoulders, whether they should be viewed as sidewalks and bus stops and so forth. And in settlement of those claims, both us and PennDOT worked together to agree to do certain improvements and participate in the funding of, of improvements of both uh, existing sidewalks along various state roads, uh, particularly uh, West 12th Street, West, West 26th, and uh, I think also Steritania. Uh, and then we would also be doing uh, Cahey Road. And so in both instances, the township uh, agreed to assume uh, uh, to, me to, to meet the 20% matching share of the, f of the overall funds for both of those sets of projects. This agreement relates to the PennDOT, you know, the projects on the PennDOT roads, um, and it is more in line with the historical agreements we've had with PennDOT with respect to the sidewalks and who has what responsibilities and so forth. Uh, it does not assign uh, ultimate responsibility to the township like PennDOT is now trying to to promote mm -hmm. um, and the the purpose of this is the supervisors had previously approved uh, this agreement along with the Cahey Road agreement and the underlying settlement uh, but now that the final design has been uh, completed for the, the state roads the numbers changed a little bit uh, resulting in an increase uh, of the township's obligation um, by about, I think it was a little over $18,000. And so the, the township's share uh, of that uh, total uh, is now uh, $255,378, um, as opposed to, I think it was in the $235,000 range last time. Well, actually, Mark, if I remember correctly, when we initially talked with PennDOT about the project, it was going to be about $400,000 for the 12th Street project. 
Well, that was a, that was a different project uh, that, did, that, that, that put sidewalks in on 12th Street down towards the airport. This, these improvements are not those areas. Oh. These are different areas that weren't addressed during that time period. Correct. But yeah. it goes from Pittsburgh all the way to Asbury. Correct. Yes. Um, but I don't think there's any work that has to be done to Asbury because that work was already completed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there a motion in regard to the, and this is just one agreement for 12th and 26th Street? Yeah, it covers, uh, let me just specifically look here. I've got it in my paperwork. It gives the uh, location. <clears throat> uh, there's West 12th Street, there's Peninsula Drive, yes. and West 26th Street are the three uh, roadways that are, that are covered by this. Gotcha. Okay. All right, is there a motion in regard yeah. to the uh, reimbursement and maintenance agreement? Yeah, I'll move to approve this agreement. If you want to use this reference number, Cheryl, 010W71 is the agreement number that is on this. I move to approve that. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. And I just want to clarify the folks out there that this all goes back to a PennDOT project completed several years ago that uh, we participated in to provide pedestrian facilities. Uh, on 12th Street? 12th Street, correct. Um, and typically in, the, in those situations, a local municipality would chip in about 20% of the costs for facilities they request. So we have requested sidewalks be installed in addition to a state project. Uh, unfortunately, uh, PennDOT uh, was sued uh, for uh, ADA compliance for individual disabilities uh, compliance. We were uh, dragged into that for their work and this uh, these funds are we are being uh, we are proving today is tied to that lawsuit to append up project for us to cover the twenty percent of those costs. So this is not a new project. Uh, this is us uh, being dragged into a lawsuit for PennDOT. Is that accurate, Brian? That's accurate. Yes. Which is why we have been fervently debating uh, PennDOT and trying to negotiate agreements with PennDOT for other pedestrian uh, projects in the township to avoid this happening to the township again. So. Communications. Mark? Uh, nothing further. John? I've got a couple here. Um, this comes from the Mill Creek Police Department Chief Scott Height. Uh, he's <coughs> requesting permission to purchase a rescue phone quad system and connectors from Rescue Phone Incorporated at a cost of $4,096. The total price of the system was reduced by $899 with the trade-in of the current non-functional equipment. The new equipment is essential to the crisis negotiation team and the resolution of critical incidents. Although the equipment failure and purchase was unexpected, there should be sufficient funds in the major equipment line item. Of is that the, the case? Park? Is that did you verify that? Yes. Okay. And uh, chances are that could have been used tonight. There was a situation late this afternoon that's uh, you know, peacefully resolved. Thank God for that. So anyway, I put that in the form of a motion, that purchase request. I'll second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Okay. Uh, a couple other things here. Uh, out here at the, uh, in the lobby, there is a giving tree, a Christmas tree with names of uh, children and families who are, are not fortunate enough to have a nice Christmas this year with gifts. Uh, the Mill Creek Tree is up and tags are ready to be taken by individuals that can help sponsor other Mill Creek families and children in need. This year there were a total of 75 families with approximately 150 that are in some need of support during the holiday season. Uh, the names on the Giving Tree all come, to the Mill Creek, all come from the Mill Creek School District Elementary Schools. Uh, so each family is a local Mill Creek resident. Giving Tree gifts are due back to the township building on December 13th. Uh, and thanks to all the generous residents who help participate, they always have and always come through and make Christmas special for these needy families. Uh, we, do, we have done something a little different this year for the first time. Uh, when you go to take a name, you go to the receptionist and let her know that you've taken uh, a tag and your name and phone number are recorded that way. Uh, that way, because we had some situations where 
presents were coming in last minute last year, so we need to find a better way of contacting somebody. And uh, unfortunately, we had some tags that were removed from the tree. Yes, and, and not never got them. Never back. got them back. So please, and, and we know the Mill Creek residents have always been very generous in helping out on this this effort every year. So uh, hats off to Londa Cirillo and Ashley Marsteller in the Parks Department for handling that. So please, if you're in the audience tonight. Don't take a tag tonight. Don't take, please don't take it but, tonight. <laughs> but if you'd like to come back so that we can register yeah. your name, that would okay. be appreciated. Okay. One other thing here that uh, I've been getting calls, and I'm sure Brian and John have been too, because I know that our public services department has been receiving calls and emails, and sometimes a letter. Uh, advanced disposal. You doing this? Um, I just I want to shake my head. I'm like the Aflac duck. Uh, very disappointed. Um, it's just it's just beyond belief the 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 incompetency of this company in their trash removal if you have leaves out there folks and you have them bagged they were supposed to be picked up last week um, please be patient hopefully it won't snow before the leaves are picked up uh, we get to hear the song and dance and the excuses I'm running out of patience as you can probably tell uh, hopefully we'll get this matter taken care of in the meantime, keep calling advance, letting them know how disappointed you are in their service. We already know. Uh, I'd like to make some movement on this next year. This is unbelievable. They've been in a contract since April, and it is a joke. So that's all I have to say. I'm done. Well, not to come to their defense, because I have gotten a lot of calls also, John, and not a lot. I've gotten a few um, and some emails. Um, it, the pickup of the garbage and the recycling has gotten dramatically better. Uh, the leaf pickup was a full week late. Uh, when I contacted uh, Advanced Disposal to find out why, um, they, they were severely understaffed when it came to what they anticipated for cleanup up here in Southwest Mill Creek after the tornado. Uh, people were taking their brush and debris out curbside and um, advanced, like I said, they, they were not prepared for that. Um, that's not making an excuse for them, that's just letting folks know why. Um, I would hope that in the future they, uh, they realize that when there are situations like that, that they need to increase staffing and uh, perform the job as they were contracted to do. Um, anything else, John? Nope, that's it. Um, I don't have anything. John? I have a couple of things from Rick Morris, Township Engineer. Uh, the engineering department typically has uh, a young woman named Bethany Sivak come in for uh, summer help as a summer internship. Uh, Rick is requesting permission to bring Ms. Sivak on board uh, over the winter instead of the summer this year. Um, her work was always office-based, so it wasn't necessarily a seasonal. It was when this young woman was, was available during her time off from school, apparently. Uh, Rick is requesting for Ms. Sivak to take uh, her part-time internship position with us from December 19th, 2017 through January 19th, 2018. Okay, is that a motion? Yeah, I'll make that a formal motion to approve um, that temporary hire. Yeah. A second. And I'll second, I think that's a good move there because she can also help with the move, physical move of engineering. Our engineering departments will be moving across the hall to the sewer department. I don't know if you were gonna mention that, John, I'm sorry. But like, no, okay. today, but they're going to they're be moving days. across during the uh, late December, early January, so it should be very helpful in that. Okay, uh, motion second. Yep. Uh, Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Uh, we, al done? we also have another request from uh, Mr. Morris uh, regarding MS4, an MS4 seminar on December 19th using online water resources data and mapping software. Uh, Mr. Morris is requesting that Joel DeTulio and Emma George from his office uh, attend uh, the training on December 19, 2017. Uh, the cost of the training is $289 uh, each and $101 overnight accommodations each. And I make that request in the form of a motion. Um, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that, but I do have a question. That's in Sewickley. Suburb of Pittsburgh. Do we normally pay for overnight on that? I'm not trying to sound like a cheapo here, but oh, no, you're absolutely right. Let me. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a two-day training or if it's a one-day training. 
I, I can answer that. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a one-day training, but because what? of the time of the year, if, if the weather's oh, bad, okay. they I'm will sorry. go the yeah. night before. Yeah. If it's not bad, we can uh, okay. cancel the reservations within yep. 48 hours. Sorry okay. to ask an Probably starts question. at 8 o'clock in the morning it or something. starts yeah. at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Right. Yeah. My, my mistake there. Thank you. All right. No, that's good. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Mr. Rowe? <coughs> I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. <laughs> Anything else, John? That is all I have, sir. How about our student ambassador report? Uh, the winter sports season is going to be getting into full swing here in the coming weeks. Uh, December 8th, we have a girls' basketball game, a boys' basketball game and the wrestling team will be heading out to a tournament. Um, I know the cheerleaders already had a competition and they'll be working hard so that we can bring some trophies back to McDowell this year. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. I did not mention, and I, uh, my mistake, we did have an executive session on November 17th. I think that was our only one, Cheryl. Okay. Um, Attorney Shaw. I just have uh, two things here. Um, we received a couple of uh, tax assessment appeals uh, with respect to uh, um, one is from MCH Corporation. Uh, it relates to a, a parcel I believe they had purchased with a, had an old assessment of 40500 The new assessment is 178220 um, As we do with many of these, uh, we'll just continue to monitor them and get involved as necessary, but the school district typically takes the, the lead on these. Um, and then there's a second uh, appeal that was filed, uh, which actually relates uh, to uh, Mill Creek Manor, um, and that is uh, they're challenging an assessment of $19,567,000 and $900. And uh, um, Evan Adair reached out to me with respect to this appeal. If you recall, he is handling the uh, exemption appeal with respect to Mill Creek Manor. There are some issues in that tax assessment that are related to the some of the issues in the exemption, and he it's his recommendation that um, uh, he be allowed to uh, file on behalf of the township an intervention into this tax assessment appeal, so he can ensure that those issues uh, get addressed uh, in that appeal as well as the appeal he's currently handling. Um, I think it makes sense for him to continue to be involved in it from that perspective and would recommend that the supervisors approve uh, Evan handling this uh, tax assessment appeal um, on behalf of the township. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to that effect? Yeah, I'll move to approve that motion with uh, Mark was just talking about keeping Evan Adair on as handling to the, handle the intervention, intervention okay. on MCH. All right. Is there a second? I have a second. Uh, Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Anything else, Mark? Uh, that's all I have. Cheryl? Ann? Any? No, I'm good. You're good. Okay. Citizens we know, we know to be heard. <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on up. Take your turns. Just need your name and address for the record, please. My name is Pat Rossi. I am from 5143 Richmond Street here in Mill Creek. This is our first time at this meeting. Um, I have our representatives, too, from our block. We are having a lot of problems um, on Richmond between Bryant and Lehigh. Uh, we have a lot of problems with the Great Lakes School, parking on the streets, parking on all of our grass, parking on the roads. They do have two parking lots, uh, one there at the school and one across the street. Now they don't utilize that one always across the street because they're too lazy to walk across the street. So they park all along um, where the basketball court is, okay, between Gore and Lehigh. Mm -hmm. yeah. They park all along in there. Then they park on Lehigh. I have pictures yet from yesterday. I did call and talk to Mr. Grow and I did call the police. They park so close that we cannot, if you're coming up Lehigh, you cannot see the traffic coming over Richmond Street. Um, so I did call the police officer and people park right there at that corner. It's supposed to be a two-way street. You cannot get two cars to go up and down when you got people parking on Lehigh. Now, 
My mother-in-law was almost in an accident yesterday because you cannot see. The policeman, I said to him, what is, is there a law that for your parking, you know, like 15 feet from the stop sign and 30 feet from the fire hydrant? The policeman replied to me, I don't know what that law is. I'll have to look it up. Okay. Um, he did come. Um, he went up Lehigh Street, turned around, and came back. He had to pull out halfway into the intersection to be able to see if any traffic was coming down Richmond. Um, I did have the, um, I've called and talked with the zoning board this summer. I've had to have um, speed limit signs put up on our street because there wasn't any. It's supposed to be 25 miles an hour. People are going 40 miles an hour most of the time on our street. The reason why? Because they don't want to have to deal, because we run parallel to Peach Street, you know, and we have St. George's School. And so they had to monitor um, the speed limits there. I've spoken to the police department. I said to them, because my neighbors, they all call me the mayor of Richmond Street. Um, all of the neighbors are very willing to have the police park in any one of our driveways to monitor, to ticket people, and then you guys could be rich because there are that many speeders on my street. I assure you we would not get rich. We would not. Uh, no. Well, believe you me, you just might. <laughs> no, uh, the state will get rich. The state we're we're get only rich. allowed to keep we so much of, 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 of the stick and say. Well, a tiny piece is better than nothing. <laughs> But, you know, there's so many accidents at that corner. My one neighbor, uh, Linda, lives right there across from the I-Bank. Her house has been egged four times in the last few weeks. Um, people just, they never stop at those stop signs. I think we should have a four-way stop um, on that intersection. So, uh, of, of Richmond and? Um, Richmond and Lehigh because you got the park there, okay? And that's Parking another issue. Just one second, was this Tony Shamira, Officer Shamira went over, do you know? Was it Officer Shamira? Was yes. That, okay. Yeah. okay, what typically happens in a situation that you're describing is the officer will monitor the situation and then make a recommendation to the supervisors. That's what he told me. And as to what he thinks needs to be done to improve the, the parking and whether it's the stop signs or or speed um, in the area. I can assure you that if people are parked on the street in the winter time, they won't be parked there for very long. Um, we have we have a uh, an ordinance that does not permit uh, parking on the street in the winter. Um, that so, doesn't matter to those people over well, at uh, Great Lakes, believe you it, me. It, it will. Yeah. Um, we've had many instances in the township where they get a little tag on their car and if it's there 24 hours later their car won't be um, so that tends to get people's attention very quickly and then the word spreads that if you park on the street your car might not be there when you come out so um, we do have that ordinance it's been in effect for a number of years um, people tend to either forget about it or ignore it until the weather gets bad but um, we do have that ordinance and that that will make a difference. What can well, we do with this parking situation with the school? It's getting worse. Well, they now have so many programs over there. They run two shifts of classing. If it's a matter of, of they classing. need more parking, then they're going to have to address that. If, it's, if we receive notification from the, from the police officer that the roads need to be posted year-round for no parking, we can, we can do that also. I'd like to even have speed bumps on my street. No, we no, don't do that. Can't do that. No, sorry. <laughs> well, I think then the best thing is to put in the four-way stop there okay. to prevent tragedy. Well, I'll, okay, well, I'll, I'll touch on that real quick. Yeah. You, you, you have, per, per the state highway laws, you, you actually have to have some pretty significant what they call warrants to get a, a four-way stop sign yeah. per the state law. We, we can look into it. Um, I, I can't reset them off the top of my head, um, but you, you, you do have to have uh, a traffic, st a formal traffic study done, a PennDOT approval to put a four-way stop in. Um, so I, I just don't want to promise you something that we might not be able to do, because we get that request a lot from folks. Is can't you just put a four-way stop in? Yeah. And, well, this yeah. is a start. 
Um, you know, coming here is, and informing you of what's happening yeah, out here absolutely. in this neighborhood. Absolutely. You know, because you have that basketball court there. All yeah. that is is a troublemaker, okay? There is um, beer, broken bottles. I've had to call and have them come and empty out the trash cans. And the place is never cleaned up. The grasses don't get cut. You know, and it, it's just deplorable. We'll get Jerry Burger and you on. get all kinds yes. of these people coming in here, beer cans, broken bottles. It's, it's ridiculous. And then my father-in-law, God bless his soul, he built the house, you know, that they live in. He's 89 years old this year, okay? And he would have come here tonight, but he probably would have had a heart attack coming up here and talking to you guys. Back in, let's see, what year was this? In 1965, I have the original um, bank statement that they had to pay to have their street paved. Only one time since then have the streets department ever come and put a thin coat of tar onto that road. Let's see, I'm going to say maybe four or five years ago, I called here and they promised me that within the next year I was on the list to get my street fixed. Well, that's not ever happened. And the street between um, Gore Road and Lehigh, right there where all the basketball courts are, is so full of holes, it's ridiculous. You know, we used to be a nice, quiet little neighborhood. But I'll tell you, ever since that Great Lakes school has come in, I'm well known here at the police department and at the zoning department because I have, I've made so many calls here this past summer because then I have to deal with the Chinese restaurant behind me. Before you go any further about it, for some reason the timer didn't get set and I think that you've well exceeded the five minutes. And I, think I do have your phone number, Mrs. Rossi, and I will be in contact with okay. you. Okay, because I have questions. pictures from yesterday's okay. parking. Okay, okay. okay. We'll, we'll get them from you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Anyone else? Saw some other hands. Okay. This gentleman. There we go. Just like the lady before, I'm <coughs> here for the first time. What is your name, sir? Ron Shock. Twenty eight seventeen West Line Street. Okay. Could you spell your last name? C H A A C K. Okay. And you say it S H O C K. Okay, got it. But anyway, I'd like to know who I have to get a hold of to have the uh, these guys next door here come to my house over here. The IPD. They must. That's imposter police, because they must be. Because I called them two years ago and I'm still waiting. Well, what's and what's I the concern? Saw, talked to one at Kmart, and he didn't do nothing either. That was in August. People blowing up and down the road, speeding, running. The, there's a three-way stop there, running the stop sign. You know, they don't care. I stopped one guy because he was tailgating me. And I says, how come you didn't stop at the stop sign? He says, well, if there's nobody coming, why bother? Well, if there was such an animal or a person as an IPD, they would have been over there doing their job. I've even called and talked to a couple of the phone screeners. Those two women at work over there, and they don't do nothing either. What's the street again, sir? West Line. West yeah. Line Street. Right on the corner of 29th and West Line. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Even the school buses blow through the stop sign. Okay. So, school buses, I've even seen a couple of the people next door blow through there. If I'm, not make, I'm not saying that you should become our police department, but if I'm you not happen to see. To. But no, 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 but what I'm suggesting is. If you happen to see a school bus do something like that, if you get the number. Oh, yeah. Because I'm sure that they would frown on that next door. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> the number well, of the I give bus. up talk, calling these people over here. That's, like I said, this is my first time. So I figure I'm coming to you. You must be over those guys, I, I would imagine. Yes. But something needs to be done, man. I mean, nothing. There's kids in that neighborhood. If somebody run out. If one of their little kids ran out chasing a ball, they got away from them. And somebody ran him over. Mm -hmm. be too, by the time the cops get there, there'd be fish food. Mr. Groh is taking 
copious notes here, and yes. he will address all of this with the police department. Please call me tomorrow with your phone number so I can get back to you with the results. Okay? What's your number? I don't have it. 833 Just call me here at the Township Building. I'll just call and ask for you. Yes. Yep. Please do. I can do that. Yes, Absolutely. Yes, sir. Please do, sir. Absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ron. I don't think I'm moved. I can't freaking see. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm Good like, evening, guys. Yeah. Lynn Craker, 5411 Millfair. Don't think I'm being rude, please, or anyone else. But you are. <laughs> no. I've got to put. Kidding. I can't. I can't see much longer. I'm gonna oh, have to put some I sunglasses probably. on. Here. Um, I just go wanted ahead. to go back to your item, agenda number 13, with the leases. Um, when you brought up the tax collector lease, you all kind of looked a little uh, bewildered about it. So I just want to take a few minutes of my time here to tell you or remind you what has happened with that lease and what hasn't happened. Um, being the current tax collector, I actually took office in 2006, took over a lease that was signed in 1998, a 10-year lease by the prior tax collector. The lease expired in 2008, and since then I have been asking repeatedly to supervisors, treasurers, solicitors for a new lease, and I've never been given one. I'm entering my fourth term starting January 1st, and all I'm requesting is the lease agreement that is part of my compensation that I have not been given in my past two and a half terms. I included this request in my payment uh, compensation request I gave you in February. It was the second point on there that asked for a four-year lease to run concurrent with the term of the tax collector and it was never addressed. The only thing that was addressed was the pay increase, which was denied because somebody thought I was overcompensated for my job. So at this point, I just would like somebody to finally tell me that before the end of the year, I will have a lease agreement for the upcoming term of my office, just like the new district justice and your other renters in the building. Okay. Okay. Am I gonna have that, gentlemen? Well, I brought up the inquiry, Lynn. I know you did, and everybody else on the panel looked like confused, like oh, they didn't know what we well, were talking well, about. Well, it's the first time I've, I've heard it was a problem, was when John mentioned it today. Well, it was in my payment, uh, so. my compensation paperwork I sent to you in Feb, uh, end of January or Feb. No, actually, I sent it in November the year prior, when it first went into negotiations for the pay increase. That was included yeah. in there as point number two. Well, Lynn, you're welcome to come upstairs and talk to us anytime you want. Um, I'm not going to get into that. I have talked to supervisors about that, maybe not you in particular, Mr. Morgan, but I have talked to Mr. Groh, who has talked to Mark, and I know has been in contact with solicitors. I, this has been going on before you even got here, John. I've talked to supervisors over supervisors. It just feels like, to me personally, that you don't respect the office and the job I'm doing, because you will not give me my lease, which is part of my compensation. Is that, uh, just, just so I'm clear, is, um, are, you, are you concerned we're going to kick you out of the building or, no. or, or do you need to I want for a like, lease like that a tells me person? who's responsible for cleaning my carpets if my office is going to be painted again after going into year number 13 I just I the lease I have that I took over I never even signed okay. so uh, if I was a tenant in any other building I am on a lease a uh, you know, month to month lease right now and I've been on it for nine years I don't think it's a difficult request to be fulfilled. It's not. I just, I just feel like every other office is more important than my office, and I do you guys a service by collecting your taxes, collecting your streetlights, and you're not giving me the respect back that I think I deserve. It's a reasonable request and one that I have heard before, and we'll get on it. Thank you. All right. I saw another hand. Yes, sir. Thomas Del Frad, 4357 West 28th Street. I'm just going to say, Brian, if the job made you blind, then it was way had, too I had eye surgery yesterday, and <laughs> I tried to, I thought I could make it, but the say meeting went longer than too it. late. Yep. Uh, everything is relative, and with regard to the horrendous storm that blew through here a few weeks ago, um, I was fortunate enough, our neighborhood was fortunate enough not to be touched by the tornado. Um, or experienced the devastation and tragedy that the people did on East 30th Street. However, I still had waist deep water from my backyard north to 26th Street, as far east as you could see to McKee and as far west as you could see to Patio Drive. Um, I realized that the township is aware of the problem, 
I have been working with PennDOT officials um, who are collecting data and studying. I don't know how much more data you need other than the fact that it is waste deep uh, water uh, and insufficient piping across 26th Street. Uh, it's my concern that now that it has been identified as a PennDOT issue with an undersized pipe that goes under 26th Street, that the township will wipe its hands of the problem and push it that way. I need assurance that you guys will stay on them as I am going to stay on you. And with the transitions that we're having, who do I bug other than Rick Morris um, with Mr. McGrath retiring, who's going to be spearheading that well, uh, I, project? I, absolutely. Well, I, just so you know, Mr. Alfred, our engineering department is deeply involved in that, in that project. Um, Ms. Sokol will be taking over as township engineer when, when Rick retires next year. Um, we, I believe, Ann, we had the PennDOT's consultant team in, in our office a few weeks ago. Yeah, I um, actually met to him. Rick brought um, representative over to the so house. So well, this is not something we're just handing off to PennDOT, our, our engineering team. It, it is involved in, in the process and the project. Um, the project's being funded through uh, the, what's called the TIP. PennDOT's Transportation Improvement Program. I'm the vice chair of the board that oversees that funding. We were able to secure those funds for this project. So um, we are very involved in the project. Yeah. Oh, well, again, I just didn't, I want the planning and the data collection to move into engineering and then project completion yeah. because I, I had two feet of water on three sides of my house and my block walls can't take that kind of pressure. Sure. Um, it, three houses down. I even called John Blows at his request when the sewer started. He couldn't even make it down. He said it was too dangerous to make it down there. My 87-year-old mother was with me that evening. God forbid if something would have happened or if anybody had, you can't get out. I mean, I was up to my waist in water, unbeknownst to me, just ahead of the tornado, walking up and down the street. You just can't move. Yeah. That was another ungodly amount of rain and yes. a, and a but they're becoming strong. more and more like common rather than yeah. exceptions Brian that's Some, just it I somebody's mean, gonna have to change their uh, the, the way they uh, refer to these storms because yeah, yeah. they're you not can't have a hundred year storm once a week anymore. yeah and yeah. I mean I've got 12 sandbags in my garage and I hate you know I spent that entire night just watching the water and even it didn't even recede as quickly as it did before mostly because of the leaves but I mean, the only thing I'll quote with Senator Laughlin, it is PTFD, it is post-traumatic flood disorder. I mean, I, it, every time it rains, I have to go, th I go through a process. That's well, I, I can assure you, Tom, that nobody's going to drop the ball on this one. They're yeah. going to stay on it. Yeah. Um, I'll have to give Gary credit, or you probably don't even know what I'm referring to, do you? Um, we had a discussion after one of our more recent meetings about, about your situation. And uh, the township actually owns some property off of McKee Road, uh, east side of McKee, south of, what would that be there? South of Fidler. South of Fidler. Yeah, from yeah. Fidler all the way to 38th. There's a little park there. Yeah. Yeah. A park. I'll give you, I have a half acre in my backyard. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I have an acre and a half, half acre that's really... Well, this is you about, can have it if you want to put retention base. This is about I mean, eight acres, I believe. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> every little yeah. big house. Appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we act I actually got on the phone with PennDOT the next day to talk to, uh, to talk to them about that property, and they are incorporating that as a possibility for um, relieving that, that pressure on that uh, neighborhood. Okay. So that's well, moving, and we're not going to drop the ball. Yeah. Well, I guess I just you, yeah. I don't want to be a pest, but I'm going no. to be. Well, and, Tom, let me just say this. This may sound kind of odd. I'll volunteer to take your calls. Okay. okay. My phone's always well, on. Well, I know, and, and my I door's know you open, guys are always and my email. I just want to keep right. it moving. Of course, I've talked with you when I yeah, was actually out working on the storm event. Right. Right. You and Mark Fatika, both of Correct. you, keeping you informed of what right. we're doing or trying to get done. Yeah. So. And I understand that it's not as easy as some people think it might be, but I just don't want it to get pushed right. aside. If I could add, Mr. Delfred, one of the things that people need to understand is that. Historically, many of these storm systems were designed for much smaller storms. You know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, the, the storm design was, I think, 10 years. And so when you introduce a storm that exceeds a 100-year storm, there's no place for the water to go because the systems just weren't 
designed to yeah. do that. Even under the current township ordinances, the subdivisions are, are uh, designed for 25-year conveyance, yeah. which is the national standard. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a challenge when all of a sudden you get a inundated with a number of storms that you know don't quite meet the definition of what you would expect to happen within a short time period. But right. Well, and again, if today is an example of global warming, nothing is. I mean, it's yeah. the weather is changing and. Right. Granted, there are problems elsewhere in the township. There's roads to be fixed and other flooding issues, but you know it's only as important as this one is to me because I'm right in the right. dead center of it and right in the middle of it, and yeah. I just want to make sure that it yeah. keeps moving forward. Something that I didn't bring up, I don't mean to belabor this here, but uh, the National Weather Service, they also record our rain data. They have the, the digital the, uh, allowance to do that through the computers, uh, and they're, they're marked off in five-minute increments. There was one five-minute increment there that if it would have continued for a complete hour, it would have been 7.7 .7 inches of rain in one hour. That's how one that one microburst was. Mm -hmm. That's right. it's and I'm, unbelievable. I've been there for 17 years, yeah. and only once had it ever encroached on my driveway. Yeah. Now, the cul-de-sac is a common thing, but, you know, it's changing, and that means it has to be addressed. So just stay with it. And we will. Mr. Yes. Block, that I need to bother. Or Introduce yourself. Yeah. I'll be right on her. <laughs> Jim, he's a regular. <laughs> he back there? Well, I don't know. Maybe he left. left. Oh, he yeah. left. OK. <laughs> Anyone else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 831. Okay. I'll move there. If we have any students and they don't have their homework signed, bring it on up front and we can sign it. Was there else want to I think there's some discussion. We're adjourned. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.